you are our friend from Norway, actually. Yes, we go all the way back <laughs> from Oslo. Yes, and today we're here in Orlando, Lake Nona. And you're here today too because you flew over. <laughs> yeah. Everything has been a perfect piece of art. <laughs> Yeah, smooth as can be. Smooth as it can be. Can you tell us like a little bit about yourself and just shortly, shortly, shortly what you're doing here? Yeah, let's start Orlando. with pouring some wine. Hey. Why won't we? <laughs> and uh, but my name is Jessica Prieto, and I have a travel blog. That's how I started my whole travel journey. And that happened to be back in 2014. Hello. <laughs> Thank you. That was Norwegian, by the way. <laughs> <laughs> and my travel blog, actually, it created the opportunity for me to travel around the world and make a career out of it. Mm -hmm. And I've been doing it for over 10 years now, almost. I started my blog, however, in 2014 because I wanted to share more of an experience as a foreigner in a foreign country when I went to go study in the UK. Mm -hmm. And where do you come from? I come from originally Colombia, South mm -hmm. America. My parents are from Colombia. I was born in Dallas, Texas, and I moved to Colombia when I was one. So I don't mm -hmm. remember anything about Texas. I don't know country music. Exactly. Everyone always asks me if I love country music. It's like, I was one when mm -hmm. I moved. Exactly. And uh, from Colombia, uh, when I was six years old, my family and I, uh, with my little sister, we mm -hmm. moved back to Orlando. Wow. But I always knew that I wanted to live outside of the country, outside of the States, since <laughs> I was little. Um, and Why? I... Why do I, you think that, Urge? I always felt that I didn't belong here in the U.S. Mm. long term. My family is here, so it's always home. Mm -hmm. But I felt that my men my mentality and my personality was a little bit more meant to be in the European yeah, yeah, yeah. Wow. side. Yes. And uh, how did you... Because we have a common uh, connection to Norway, basically. Because why did you first think that you wanted... like? to be in Europe or how did you get to know about Europe? Um, since I was little, I loved going to Disney here. Mm -hmm. And one of my favorite parks, <laughs> parks of Disney is Epcot. Epcot has a uh, different country pavilions. And mm -hmm. since I was little, I always asked my mom to take us to Epcot so I can drink and drink Sodas, <laughs> sodas. Cheers, by the way. <laughs> That's a hint, hint, hint. Let's uh, take a sip. Mm. But mm. just um, eat around the world. Mm -hmm. it, it was such a fun activity as a little kid. And one of my favorite pavilions there was Norway. Mm. Because at that time, they had a Viking boat ride. Yeah. And I love that it went backwards. So, <laughs> so that was my happened. first... Uh, yeah, that was how I was introduced mm. to Norway at eight years old. The backwards country. The back <laughs> and I told my mom, I love this country so much. I want to go to Norway. And uh, I manifested it since I was little. Wow. Eight years old. Eight years old. That was my first encounter with mm. Norway wow. or a tease of what Norway mm. could be, right? Yeah. Did you meet many Vikings <laughs> and backward <laughs> boats? <laughs> <laughs> I saw many trolls, so I thought Norway was full of polar bears and trolls. So that's how Epcot really marketed it <laughs> and full of uh, boats everywhere. Yeah. But I remember that there was this movie after the ride that they showed of this little boy going to the Viking Museum. Mm. And I pictured myself one day mm. being at that same museum looking at the boats that the little boy was looking at. Mm -hmm. And uh, it's crazy what you set your mind to mm -hmm. and how powerful uh, powerful words are. Getting goosebumps. Actually. Because what you say 
it really leads to the actions mm -hmm. and direction of your life. And it's 100%. what happened to me at such a young age. Mm -hmm. wow. And I mean, yeah, it's just crazy to think that we met in Norway. Mm -hmm. We met through a mutual friend mm -hmm. and we're here today in Orlando. Wow. And now we're mm -hmm. even closer mm -hmm. here than we were back in Norway. Yeah being you know uh, in a new continent yeah, yeah and we're both experiencing very similar situations mm -hmm. now in life mm -hmm. just in two different countries yeah. me in your country and you in my country yes, <laughs> basically <laughs> and i think that's also when you're talking about manifestation because that's also like from the day i met you when i met her <laughs> that day i wanted to get to know you better yeah and uh, me and cesar Hello, Cesar. <laughs> He's also <I'm> here. here. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so we met up with uh, you and your partner in Norway uh, because we were supposed to do a dance show for your business, which I also want to hear a bit more about. Yeah. Uh, but then I told him after on our way home that, wow, that girl, we really get to, like, I want to know her better. I want to know her, like on a more personal level and that's like really a person I can see myself as a friend with and not just doing this one project together right and uh, now we're here yeah. and because we were supposed to move like uh, the whole moving process for us were very fast in general but uh when we move like that we would move closer to you basically <laughs> was not in my wildest fantasy that's no, just crazy not at all because if you think about it we met at mm -hmm. one of our friends uh sunday movements mm -hmm. which is outdoor workouts mm -hmm. and it was my business partner who you actually met first mm -hmm. And then he was telling me, Jess, you need to meet this mm. power couple, the mm. energy that they bring. Mm. And I did get to see you and you gave me a big hug mm. and I didn't even know you. <laughs> we didn't even exchange our names. Yeah. And I was like, wow, if it's that girl, I really love her energy. She made mm. me feel so good and so welcomed. <laughs> But then he was the one that presented the idea of mm -hmm. having you guys dance at our networking event. Mm -hmm. And I remember the first day we met was at Somero mm -hmm. at the hotel, mm -hmm. the newest one built in Oslo at that time. And the first time we met, I felt like I knew you for so mm -hmm. long. Mm -hmm. The way that we connected, the way that we laughed, it just felt so natural. Yeah. Nothing forced. Mm -hmm. So it's funny that we both felt the same way. Mm -hmm. And also that was when your parents was in Norway or your mom. Yeah, you met so my actually, mom <laughs> whenever she was in Norway because she went with me that time to help me move mm -hmm. all of my things, including my dog, mm -hmm. to Norway. So I told her, hey, we need to uh, do something different and get our minds outside mm -hmm. and explore some of the nature. So why not do a workout in Norway's outdoors? And that's mm -hmm. how we met. Oh. Uh huh. Oh. So yeah, it's funny. And also because uh, now we also got to know your parents better, uh, and are have actually been meeting up with them multiple times already. Yeah. So that's great. Even and exploring business opportunities uh -huh. together, uh -huh. which is great. Oh, but can you tell me a little bit about you and your family? Like situation, because you have a sister completely equal to yourself. <laughs> yeah, it's so funny. We couldn't be more different. My sister and I, she's four years younger. Uh, I'm 30, so mm. she's 26. And she's married with two kids, a dog, a house with white fence. Mm. I'm not even exaggerating. She's like the perfect <laughs> cookie cutter. Yeah. Uh, she lives the perfect <laughs> cookie cutter life. And... Here I am, <laughs> I don't have a home mm. right now specifically. Mm -hmm. I am more like my home is where my my heart is 100%. At, the, at this moment mm. um, because I've been traveling for over 12 years and mm. living out of my suitcase, just taking memories and experiences mm -hmm. with me. 
So we both have lived a very different life. And I'm not married. I don't have kids. Mm -hmm. I have one dog. And I think he is more than enough for me. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> you, and he's right under the table. <laughs> you the kind moment. of experienced it today with me. Maybe. He had been with us to a bar. He had been with us to a restaurant. <laughs> we got free cocktails today. Shout out to Wave. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> nice. Only for the cute dog. <laughs> No, but also the thing that I really love about you and your story is um, how your mom kind of contributed to creating a monster. <laughs> yeah, a travel monster. Uh -huh. It's crazy because ever since I was little, I mentioned before I mm -hmm. loved uh, experiencing different cultures. Mm -hmm. So at the mo at that time, my parents couldn't really travel much. Mm -hmm. So my mom said that the only way that she was able to travel at that time was traveling through me, through mm -hmm. my experiences. Mm -hmm. So when I was 12, she sent me on my first travel journey, mm -hmm. solo journey. So crazy. And since then... I've been traveling mm -hmm. nonstop and she said that what was supposed to be one travel experience <laughs> turned out to be a lifetime of just nonstop traveling. Uh -huh. She's like, if I could only kind of calm her down now, then <laughs> <laughs> I would. But now she's a little travel bug herself. Mm -hmm. But I really got that from my mom. My yeah. mom always encouraged me to travel, experience different cultures. Mm -hmm. Me coming from Colombia, she told me not to date Colombians. <laughs> She's like, I did not take you out of Colombia for you to go back to Colombia. So I never really understood that when I was younger. Mm -hmm. I always wanted to do everything she didn't, everything she, she told me not to do. So, um, but now that I'm older, now that I've experienced many more uh, cultures and mm -hmm. backgrounds and countries, I see what my mother was talking about. She wanted me to be much more open-minded and not, Mm -hmm. think more in a narrow mind mm -hmm. uh, so now I understand mm -hmm. that it's so important to venture out explore different cultures not just in relationships but in friendships yeah because you really get to learn yourself from people that are very different from you you find that you have so many similarities like us we, we come from two different continents two different countries I, I mean we couldn't be more different but yet I feel like we have so many things in common yeah. isn't that interesting <laughs> And exactly right now, it's <laughs> yeah. completely accurate in any way. But I think mm, with your mom and uh, the fact that she wanted to experience traveling through you, I think that's super beautiful because that's basically what you based your business on. People are basically experiencing travel through you. And it's not only your mom anymore it's everybody you never know who is watching you mm -hmm. you never know who you're impacting by doing what you love to do exactly and by you being true to yourself by you being authentic you are impacting other people because you're encouraging them to do the same to find their inner happiness Beautiful. and to learn to love themselves <laughs> and through other people's passion yeah So, I mean, I learned this at a young age when I started traveling at age 12. And I learned that the beauty of traveling is that you get to learn self-love, especially whenever you travel solo. You have no other choice but to love yourself because you're stuck with yourself. <laughs> you are. You are stuck in your own thoughts when you're on that flight. If it's a long flight, you're 10 hours listening to yourself, to your own thoughts. If you get lost, you have to come up with your own solution, be your own problem solver. And if you're by yourself, you learn to make friends and you learn by uh, getting outside of, the sh of, of your shell and you learn by being uncomfortable mm -hmm. that it's the norm. Exactly. So yeah, I guess that through my travel platform, that's what I want and always try to encourage people to do is not to spend money on your travels no it's if you do travel or if you plan on traveling look at traveling in a different way mm -hmm. like really try to get to know the people in that country immerse in the culture because at the end of the day 
all of these stereotypes and this racism is due to lack of cultural knowledge. 100 percent. Yeah. So if we really bring ourselves to get to even if we don't travel, just the locals that we meet that are from different mm -hmm. countries or even from different backgrounds or ethnicities is really important to understand their background why are they why are they so different mm -hmm. instead of judging is really important to ask questions so mm -hmm. that's more or less what i want my platform to encourage yes. is really opening up people's mindset and perspective and getting to know the people and not the ethnicity or not their background mm -hmm. because their exactly. their skin color their the country of origin where they come from does not define who they are as a person mm -hmm. And also just the knowledge itself, I think that's also extremely powerful. Like you will get to, like we just talked about, like you will get to know like a whole book of other opportunities yeah. or knowledge or whatever, like experiences when you get to know a person. Yeah, exactly. And you get to learn about yourself through that person mm -hmm. a lot. Yeah. Your patience tolerance and certain things you get to learn how to say no mm -hmm. you get to learn how to say i don't understand yeah. because a lot of times we are very prideful mm -hmm. and if we uh say that we don't understand we think that that's a sign of weakness but that's a sign of strength because it really welcomes uh new conversations mm -hmm. and you get to learn so much about the different person yeah so I feel that a lot of the weaknesses become your strengths whenever mm -hmm. you meet people from different parts of the world oh do you have anybody in mind when you when you talk about uh, people from other cultures and everything that you learn from? Do you have any specific people or any specific situations that yeah. would like come up to the front? The first uh, thought that comes to mind is my experience when I went to South India for my mm. first time uh, to this place called Tiruchirupali, Trichy. Mm -hmm. It's an hour away from Colombo in uh, Sri Lanka and mm. everyone before I went there was asking me why are you going to go if it's not safe and just throwing all of these stereotypes yeah. because I mean let's be real we all have our we all have some sort of stereotypes right exactly. that we have in mind yeah. when it comes to different cultures so instead of coming to conclusions I was excited to experience the culture firsthand and then you also traveled alone right and I traveled alone on the way there mm -hmm. and I met up with some friends because exactly. I was going there for a friend's wedding who she oh, was getting married there. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Was it in Kerala or Tamil Nadu? Uh, the wedding? Uh, like the state? It, uh, Tamil. Tamil. Uh -huh. yeah, yeah. Ah, yeah. I lived in Kerala actually. Oh, yeah? Half a year, yeah. No, <laughs> yeah. Uh -huh. yeah. So cool. oh. it's very different from South India and uh, North India. Because South India, they don't have or allow alcohol in the wedding. Mm -hmm. North India, it's the complete opposite. Exactly. You are able to drink yeah. alcoholic beverages. But me experiencing India for the first time, just I, I would say solo because the only people that I knew there was, were really the locals and mm -hmm. two other people that went to uni with me. Mm -hmm. But other than that, it was an experience that... Now, when I look at the Indian culture, I respect it so much. Mm. I understand why there's certain differences and how to use that knowledge yeah. and really connect with the people that I meet that come from there. And it's a great icebreaker because oh. I learned a little bit of Tamil when I was there and I learned certain gestures. Like if you're going to eat food, they mm -hmm. eat with their right hand. They don't use yeah. their left hand. <laughs> exactly. So certain things, so you know not to shake their left hand yeah, yeah. <laughs> because that's what they used to clean themselves with. <laughs> so it's like little things that you would never really understand. Mm -hmm. You might hear about it, but you really understand when you experience yeah. it yourself. Absolutely. Wow. Yeah. And about the solutions, because also you said that when you're traveling solo, you have to come up with your own solutions and your own, like everything, basically okay. your, your own problem solver. And honestly, for me, at least now when I know like your story and everything you've been through also lately, I think you coming up with solutions <laughs> is a definite <laughs> high, 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 high up there in uh, your biggest skills. 
you want to tell a little bit about this? Yeah, I really don't mind. Um, well, it all started. What has helped me is my travel platform is mm -hmm. called Travel with Curls. Yeah. It started because the name came from um, the fact that I was bullied when I was younger because of my hair. Yeah. I was the only one in my household with curly hair. Mm -hmm. And I was really the one person out of so many people that had curly mm. hair. So I was always seemed or looked at as the yeah. oddball. Yeah, so yeah. growing up and mm. yeah, growing up instead of using that as a sign of weakness or letting it bring me down, mm -hmm. I decided that when I ventured into studying abroad that I was going to start a travel platform where I share all of my experiences and name it something that uh, was dear to my heart. And Great. I thought, why not just monetize what I used to get bullied from? Yes. So from there, I started to anything that I came across, whether it was a challenge, a problem, I turned mm -hmm. that pain into purpose. So it started... Uh, that's your motto, right? That's my motto, yeah. So mm -hmm. it first started because of my mm -hmm. hair. Wow. And... Um, But even before that, I was a very bad student. Mm -hmm. You know, I was the person that would always be in detention, that the principal would call my parents because they didn't want me in school anymore. Mm -hmm. I was the one student that teachers never wanted in their class. Mm -hmm. I failed biology three times. I was told that I was going to be the most, uh, most likely not to succeed from her whole class. Oh. So uh, I... I remember my guidance counselor, he sat me down and he's like, hey, you're not going to graduate if you keep on acting like this. I'm so happy I'm not your dad because you're really disappointing me hmm. and you're not even my child. And that really hurt me. Oh. And he's like, if this is, if you want to fail, continue to act how you're acting. But if you want to succeed, I suggest that you clean up your act and change your lifestyle. Mm -hmm. And it all starts by changing your habits. I would never forget those words because those words was mm. what changed my life forever. Uh, I had only one year and a half to turn what I thought was impossible into something possible and graduate. Mm -hmm. And I was able to graduate with average grades, but I graduated and I was accepted to my undergrad, which, which was the reason why I ended up in Norway. I mean, well, yeah, in Norway, but first in the UK. Mm -hmm. How did you uh, change though? What did you change? I changed it. I, I changed my habits. I had to work my butt off mm -hmm. at, while everyone, because this was during high school. So while everyone was on senior skip day at the beach, I was stuck in school studying. Mm -hmm. I was studying day and night to catch up with all of the exams that I failed And from there, I became addicted to success because I saw that, wow, I put so much time and effort into something and I see myself going 10 steps forward. Mm. What, I, what, we, what we were supposed to accomplish in three, four years of high school, I basically did it in a year and a half. Mm -hmm. So if I can implement this same strategic mindset into the exactly. next chapter in my life, how far can I go? Wow. So <laughs> instead of taking That's a break, powerful. Really. it was through pain uh -huh. that I found a purpose for myself Exactly. in that. And then from there, it turned into travel with curls when I ended up moving to London and everyone kept on asking me what my experience was like living abroad. I got tired of it. Uh, I, I got uh, tired of repeating myself. So I told them, hey, here's a link to my blog just read it and that's my experience so far living in London as a foreigner that was back in oof the first blog I did was back in 2013 before travel with curls became what it is today and I did, didn't know the power of marketing or SEO mm -hmm. or keywords so the search engines Google picked up a lot of what I was writing because I was being consistent with my content And a lot of readers started to come on and businesses started to reach out to me, asking me who has done my content, who's done my marketing. And that's how I got into the world of marketing. And that's where Travel with Curls was born. 
Wow. Do you still have the blog? I still have it. My first blog was A Day With Curls. And then I marketed it and set up my travel business to be Travel With Curls. And nice. through that platform, I have worked with a lot of big companies like Universal, uh, Disney, um, many other companies. I'm, yeah. I mean, the list goes on, but it's not just about the companies that I worked with, but the experiences mm -hmm. that I've had and the opportunity that I have gained to be able to travel around the world mm -hmm. and make the connections like that I have here. Uh-huh. Exactly. So the importance of turning pain into purpose, like uh -huh. it, it's not over when you think it's over and more or less like the story that I'm about to share, it mm -hmm. comes, the reason why I share all of that is because everything that has happened to me in the past has prepared me mm -hmm. for what happened to me recently. But that's also exactly why I want to know about your past and about any people's past, basically, because uh, if you, like we also spoke a bit about, like if you see a person that you really look up to uh, and find inspirational, then it's not just like, this is not what you see, like this whole picture. The thing that's actually inspirational is probably hidden in the whole like journey. The root of it all, yeah. Exactly. And most likely that's through pain. Like I, I always used to say that, like you grow through pain. Yep. Uh, and uh, that's very true. Like, uh, yeah. Also, like we have also been speaking a lot about that. Like if you look at your past experiences of what actually made you grow, that's most likely true the painful experiences it's very few like only happy experiences that actually takes you to the next level and uh, yeah, i think that's very important like if you can't tolerate pain then you're stuck basically yeah uh -huh. i always as cliche as this phrase is but mm -hmm. you never know how strong you are until strong is the only option mm -hmm. you have mm -hmm. and it's so true Because Absolutely. just when you think that you've hit rock bottom that mm -hmm. first time, it's that one time that it's going to prepare you for the next time mm -hmm. because it's inevitable. Even once we complete a milestone, we're going to continue to face challenges. We're going to continue to be uh, hit down to the ground. But through those challenges, we learn how to pick ourselves up mm -hmm. and not let ourselves stay down mm -hmm. because I think it's important that we let ourselves go through the emotions and yes. be in pain, be depressed. Just it's okay to not be okay. And that's mm -hmm. something that I've learned throughout all of the challenges that life mm -hmm. has thrown at me, hmm. especially the most recent one. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> so you were in Norway. Yeah. <laughs> and uh, finally lived your dream life, basically. Yeah. <laughs> Reached your Viking end destination. <laughs> My Viking dream. Uh -huh. Yeah. My Viking dream, which it all started back in 2014 mm -hmm. when I met my first love <laughs> back in uh, uni in the UK. I went to Norway for the first time, first for a guy. I think. 85 or 90% or of the people that end up in Norway that are, are foreigners or in Oslo is because of love. <laughs> Probably. <laughs> Everybody I know, actually, <laughs> to be honest. Same. I know that. I know. <laughs> so that was the first reason. Obviously, that didn't work out because we're not together anymore. But I learned so much from that experience. And I also learned how much I love Norway. Mm -hmm. I actually almost share a birthday with Norway My birthday is May 16th and Norway's constitution day is May 17th. Mm -hmm. So I felt like I was meant to be there no. in a way. <laughs> My closest friends are all Norwegian. Mm -hmm. And oh. I feel like deep down inside, I really resonate with the Norwegian culture, although mm -hmm. we're so different. <laughs> My yeah. culture and Norwegian culture. But I understand the differences and I embrace it. Yeah. So oh. after... Nine years of traveling to Norway back and forth. I've had the Schengen visa or I applied for the Schengen visa three times. When I, I was a student in London, mm -hmm. I had to get the Schengen visa before they were before they went through Brexit. 
Um, so I had the Schengen visa once. I went through the whole process of the visa uh, for Norway back in 2015 for the second time to apply for a Schengen visa. So this time in 2022, I decided to make my official move to Norway um, after postponing it because of the pandemic. But this time, my official move to Norway was because not of a guy, but to uh, be self-sustained, self-established, and for a business. Mm -hmm. So it was more to contribute to the economy, create job opportunities, and to bring all of the skills and resources and knowledge that I've obtained all these years into the Norwegian culture. Mm -hmm. I saw there was a huge opportunity in Norway that a lot of businesses were trying to communicate and expand to other yes. markets outside of Norway. And my business partner and I saw that there was an opportunity with a catastrophic event that happened to both of us. And we decided, why not open up our business in Norway? Yes. So we decided to do that in the summer of 2022. And that's when we met. And that's when we <laughs> met because of that business venture is mm. how we ended up being here today mm -hmm. and me sharing my story with you. <laughs> But what turned it from... Me selling everything that I had back in Orlando, my car, letting go of my apartment. I went to Norway with only two suitcases and my doggy. My mm -hmm. mom was there to help me with the whole moving process. Mm -hmm. So oh. being my third time applying for the Schengen visa, um, I had a full-time contract to work for a company. So it wasn't my first rodeo or my first experience with a visa situation mm. in the Schengen realm. So I somewhat knew what I had to prepare before attending my uh, immigration appointment to turn in all of my papers. Mm -hmm. However, uh, once I thought I had everything in order, according to what the website says, according to what I've done in the past and the checklist, mm -hmm. Once I arrived to my appointment at the immigration, after paying a large amount of money for that appointment, I was only there for 15, 20 minutes before the cops were called on me. And when the cops came in, as I was talking to my case handler, I was shocked because I've never had this experience mm -hmm. before when... I went to the immigration center in Norway. So they asked me for my ID. They asked me for all of my paperwork. And they asked me, what is my plan here in Norway? I told them I'm undergoing a process of opening up my business with my Norwegian business partner. I have a full-time contract. Mm -hmm. And I'm an American who has who this is her third time applying mm -hmm. for a Schengen visa and you have all of my original documents in your system. Mm -hmm. They looked at me, they looked at how long I've, I was staying in Norway and they told me you're coming with us. So mm -hmm. the case handler looked at me and I asked her, did you find all of my original documents in, in your system? She looked at me and she said, yes. The reason why the cops came was because she took too long to look in the system for my master's degree diploma because mm -hmm. I didn't have the original copy in hand. I had it already registered in the system. But by the time the cops got there, it was too late for her to... To redo that. To redo wow. the, her reporting me to the cops. Yeah, because she was basically pressing the button right there before reading through the whole thing exactly mm -hmm. and in norway wow. the police have a lot of authority when it comes to these type of immigration cases mm -hmm. however they lack a lot of knowledge when it comes to foreign affair laws because i mean naturally that's not something that they should specialize in mm -hmm. because they specialize in the police academy it's yeah, a different yeah. system but they have a lot of mm -hmm. authority when it comes to and a lot of say when it comes to these type of situations so what ended up happening was they took me into the police station and they started asking me the these same questions 
and they took all of my documents. They were reporting it in their system. They spoke to their um, higher authority person in the department, and they came back and told me, we have decided to lock you up. So crazy. Like, this is from a day that you're basically, you're coming there happy. <laughs> Definitely not thinking that you're doing anything wrong. Rather, the complete opposite, that you're really coming there with an opportunity. Your happy is basically turning into, like, your dreams coming true. And then <laughs> press the button and everything is turned upside down and you're treated like a criminal, basically. Yes. And what's really bothersome is that the whole, when I first went to Norway, I went there to make sure that I have everything mm -hmm. in order, like with the business papers, because to start off with, the business documents are all in Norwegian. Um, and they are encouraging a lot of entrepreneurs mm -hmm. who are expats to open businesses, to contribute to the diversity of the society in Norway. Yeah. But it makes it very difficult when all of the documents are in Norwegian. Luckily, mm -hmm. my business partner, he's native Norwegian. So I was there making sure that my part was done. Then I left Norway and came back once I had a fixed contract mm -hmm. with a full-time employment. Exactly. So that was my, my reason to come back. But the cops told me that I have overstayed my time. Mm. They told me that I overstayed uh, about 67 days out of the 90-day grace period that uh, non-EU foreigners are allowed to stay because I could stay for, nine, for 90 days, three months. However, according to their website, it says that although you're undergoing the visa application, even if your visa period expires mm. during that time, you're still allowed to stay in Norway. Mm. And what's oh. even crazier is that the day before of them arresting me, I was at the police station mm. because the business registration forum in Norway asked for the police mm -hmm. to sign a copy of my passport to authorize that it is a legit passport. And that is so valid. you were basically there the day before. So like November 9th <laughs> was when I went for them to make a copy of my passport, validate it, make sure that it's legit. Mm -hmm. They signed off. I went, submitted that to the business registration. The last item that was needed to be submitted for them to activate our business. Mm -hmm. That was on November 9th. On November 10th, less than 24 hours later, I was taken into custody oh. in the same place where they validated my passport the day before. That's insane. And uh, what's oh. even crazier is that on my online application, it states that I was only in the Schengen country for 78 days, not over 90 days. Wow. So this whole thing is actually seriously, uh, it's crazy that it's possible, really. Like this yeah. whole thing. They were just, they were jumping into conclusions. They mm -hmm. were assuming without properly looking into all of the details mm -hmm. because they could have just gone online to the immigration portal on UDI and checked my exactly. online application. Like it should be in a case like this. <laughs> and oh. um, that didn't happen. Instead, they took me into a cell like if hmm. I were a criminal, I was next to a lady that was a drug addict and was screaming her lungs out. And I was in between one cell was the lady who, who was screaming. The other cell was a actual criminal who they caught off the streets mm -hmm. selling drugs. And I was right in the middle. They took my mugshot. They took my fingerprints. They took all of my belongings. And they said I only had one phone call to make. Wow. And you got the phone call. My boyfriend. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I mm -hmm. called him and he was happy to hear from me after three hours. He thought everything was going just fine because we prepared oh. for this day. Exactly. I even had little sticky notes on each <laughs> paper in, in the folder of exactly what mm -hmm. document we had. 
And mm-hmm. once he heard, I couldn't even talk. I couldn't even explain to him where I was. So the police had to tell him and he was in shock. Mm-hmm. He couldn't believe that I was in the Oslo police district jail. Mm-hmm. <laughs> oh. He's like, you didn't do anything wrong. It, I just couldn't believe it. Once they closed that thick steel door mm-hmm. and they are literally, there's a camera on you watching you piss, watching you Uh-oh. do everything you do in private and they're wa- and they're looking at you the whole entire time. You have no privacy mm. and you're just stuck in these four cement walls. Oh. But I literally, I've heard so many people talk about their experiences in jail and prison cells before and how people go crazy there. I understand mm-hmm. why people end up going crazy there. Oh, but that like the way I've pictured like jail in Norway is like very like an apartment basically. But that's uh, that's probably more like if you're staying there for a long time. Jail? No, but when they took me to the immigration detention center mm-hmm. where all the refugees are, that was more or less like a dorm. Mm. Like a dorm mm. um, type of layout. You have mm. your small bed. You have a TV. Yeah, yeah. Uh, you have your own bathroom. and um, But wow. you are just there and um, sharing a common area mm-hmm. with the same gender. But it was just a terrible experience. And every time that it's crazy. anyone would look at me in the cell, they were asking me, why are you here? Mm-hmm. If you have your business up and running, you have a full-time contract, like mm-hmm. you went to the immigrant, like you went to turn yourself in. Mm-hmm. It's not like you were hiding. Exactly. Why are you here? <laughs> they were even confused. Mm-hmm. I was in the cell for about eight hours before they transferred me to the immigration detention center. Wow. And then from there, what happened? And then from there, um, two female cops came and they asked me, where is your luggage? Mm-hmm. And I looked at them and I said, I moved here. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I am living here. My luggage is in my apartment mm-hmm. at my friends. And they look at each other and they're like, we're so confused, but you just have to come with us because we have to follow what they told us to do. And we drove all the way up close to the airport where they... Um, hold hostage all of the refugees that are traveling. And they, again, scanned me, took all of my belongings. I haven't seen my phone. I haven't seen anything at this time. And they told me, again, that I only had available for one phone call before they locked up the doors and put me in bed. And I remember going inside they were all so confused. They were like, if you don't have your luggage, where did they take you from? Mm. Because the people that come here are the ones that are taken from the airport. Hmm. It's so many like sirens in this whole story. Like nothing of this thing should have been happening from any single step right there. It's just like, it's just one misunderstood bottom basically. And from that little action, it's no way back. No way back. It's crazy. And I just remember I asked the people that work there, mm. um, how long am I going to stay here? And they told me until they can figure out what they're going to do with you. You can either go back to the States tomorrow or you have to stay here until things work out with the lawyer. Mm. And that was already just more than 24 hours that I was there and they were able to give me a phone with some minutes. So I was able to call my parents, my boyfriend, my business partner. Mm -hmm. And from there, one of the guys, I became really close with two people that were there with, um, that were working there because they were very curious on how I ended up there. Mm. Um, and they were telling me that they were going to help me um, get out of there because they knew that I wasn't meant to be Mm -hmm. there. 
That's the people from the police? Or yeah, people, yeah, the people that were working mm. there. That's nice, at least. I was sitting down and just trying to figure out, they gave me my verdict when I was there. It was all inner region, so they gave me a translator. And that's when they gave me my pre-verdict of expelling me for two years from the whole Schengen and um, having them deport me from Oslo back to the States. And I had to be escorted by the police. Oh. I just couldn't believe that all mm. of this was happening. So it's just straight from your basically dream coming true to the <laughs> red button to escorted to the States. Yeah, to a Back whole to nightmare start. that I feel that it was still a nightmare that mm. I haven't woken up from. Mm. Just seeing the refugees that were there, peeling the fruits, telling me that they were separated from their families for like five mm. weeks now. They haven't seen their husbands because they separate the men, mm. the women and the children. Oh. So they were just there telling me their stories. I was like, what the hell am I doing here? Mm -hmm. What is this? Finally, I was able to leave after 24 hours. They still took my identification, my passport, everything. They told me that they're letting me leave with the condition that I report myself to the police twice a week with a certain time frame. And since then, my boyfriend picked me up, but I told him I cannot go to these appointments at the police station by, by, by myself. I'm scared. What if they take me in again? Mm -hmm. And that is a traumatic experience. It was, and it is till mm -hmm. still till this day. Of and course. every time I went to the police station, I did this for a month. For a month, I went to the police station and I would have anxiety. Mm -hmm. I would have panic attacks because I wasn't sure if they were going to take me in again. Mm -hmm. And uh, we had to get a lawyer. Uh, we had to get a lawyer with a very Norwegian name which makes it very expensive <laughs> <laughs> because uh, he knows the ins and outs of foreign affair laws. Uh, he's worked with immigration for over 21 mm -hmm. years. And unfortunately, uh, just by using my name, which is not Norwegian, it would be very difficult for them to look at my case. Mm -hmm. So I had to use a credible name. So we're still working on um, my whole case now, but I, I was deported uh, December 9th. Mm -hmm. escorted out by the police i was riding in the back of the police's car with my dog we, we were both deported together <laughs> and i couldn't even check in my luggage like a normal person i had to be at the police uh station waited there until i was able to get on the flight wow and even when I was, uh, whenever they were boarding, they had to board me first so they can put me all the way on the back of the plane so I wouldn't make a scene. And I had to be taken into the plane by the police car, in a police car, going wow. through security, uh, where all of the criminals go through security. Mm. So I did not even look at the airport or see the airport the whole entire time when they were deporting me. Wow. And the pilot had to get my passport. I didn't even see my passport until I landed in Miami. Hmm. Imagine everyone's face looking at me, this huge envelope exactly. wow. saying being escorted and deported out. Wow. I don't know what to say here. And it's, I think like most people would never imagine that case at all and no. at least not uh like coming from norway like that's really the like the dark behind the carpet basically that you would never think exists and that i know you yourself wouldn't think existed either no i celebrated my birthday in norway since i was 21 mm -hmm. all the way up to my 30s mm -hmm. i've only seen the best of the best Norway has to offer from exactly. its nature, from its people, from the vast amount of opportunities that they have in business growth mm -hmm. and development. But I've also seen the worst of Norway. Definitely. And, you know, I just feel that the reason why I am so passionate in sharing my story is because I saw so many other people that were being mistreated mm -hmm out of um, 
out of their own will. They mm -hmm. didn't know how to defend themselves verbally because they didn't speak the language, neither English or Norwegian. And if this is how they treated me, someone that wasn't trying to go against the law, someone yeah. that wasn't trying to hide. And not making a scene either, <laughs> basically. No. Even if you're the, like the one with the most reason to do so, basically. I just did what they told me to do because, you know, the law is the law at the end of the day. But just the way that they went out of hand and the way how poorly this whole situation mm -hmm. was handled, mm -hmm. you know, it being my third time applying for a visa in uh, Schengen. And for me, it was just so devastated, devastating to see how poorly it was handled mm -hmm. when I've experienced much better treatment from Norway before. Mm -hmm. So it was truly an eye opener to see that this is what's going down behind the scenes exactly. and no one really knows exactly. until they talk about it. And after th my experience, I did share it on social media. Some press did happen to get their hands on this story. Um, and people started sharing their experiences with me mm -hmm. and how they've been mistreated by the Norwegian system because of the lack of communication, lack of, and all the gaps that are in the system right now when it comes to expats mm -hmm. wanting to establish themselves in Norway. And I think that there is a huge opportunity for it to be improved mm -hmm. to avoid uh, people to go through the experience that I did mm -hmm. when they're trying to do their best mm -hmm. in the most sincere way. Yeah. And I think also just the fact because you're still, you still want to go back to Norway. Yeah. I do. <laughs> after all this, after this like heavy experience, that's still your goal. At the end of the day, um, I still see myself in Norway long term. Mm -hmm. I see myself establishing, growing my business there. Why? I, there's just so much opportunity. There's so much opportunity mm -hmm. in the Norwegian um, community because it's really a community that hasn't really been touched and that there's so much demand mm -hmm. for diversity. There's so much demand for expansion, for inclusion. And the Norwegians are seeking to work with other markets mm -hmm. outside of Norway. They just don't know how to effectively communicate with them. Yeah, And I feel like that is where I can bring my skill sets, my Absolutely. resources, and really connect the bridge. Everything that I've done with Travel with Curls, mm -hmm. with the business that I opened up in Norway, is really connecting the uh, people from other markets to the Nordics and from mm -hmm. the Nordics outside. So, yeah. wow. And mm -hmm. also, that's just where my heart has always been. Despite of what happened, it doesn't change my love for Norway or for the people there. So. Mm -hmm. That's beautiful and it's strong. <laughs> and I think also just the way that you carry this whole situation, because you, uh, you're also honest about that. Like you're still having traumas from this. You're yes. still uh, anxious kind of about it and everything. Oh, yeah. And you should be because it's every time I see a cop car come, come close to me, I get into panic mode mm -hmm. and I start, my heart starts beating fast. Mm -hmm. I start getting sweaty because I think back on what happened to me mm -hmm. and no, they physically didn't hurt me, mm -hmm. but mentally I so. was torn and I'm still torn. So I'm still recovering from it. But through all of this, I have started writing a book. I didn't tell you this. Mm -hmm. It's no. called, uh, <laughs> break down before you build up yeah so wow. it's more or less uh sharing the stories not just of this catastrophic mm -hmm. experience with my visa immigration but also with all of the past stories and mm -hmm. uh sharing how i've turned something challenging into an opportunity yeah. for growth and impact and it's a workbook so it's a self-reflect book oh, that nice. uh, really helps you overcome any challenges that you're facing and using what I have taken into consideration to uh, enhance mm -hmm. my lifestyle 
and implement it into your own way of uh, becoming a better problem solver, better communicator, and uh, overall just a better human being for mm-hmm. yourself and for your business. Because the best foundation that you can have as a for a successful business is having a good foundation for yourself mentally. Preach. <laughs> Because what I really, um, what really ticks me off nowadays is that people think that, oh, I can uh, start a business in 90 days and it be successful. And I'm not saying that that's not possible. That is possible. There's overnight success, but that doesn't determine longevity. Yeah. Because what happens whenever they face a challenge? Mm. How are they going to know how to build themselves up before they let themselves break down? And it's really... It talks more about making sure that you have a solid foundation mentally before you start trying to build a business. Yeah. Wow. And that's exactly (laughs) what I love also about you through this whole thing. Like from you were a child, basically, uh, through all these hard times, you've always been uh, seeking opportunities. And even now, you're not here You're not living here, basically. You're already on Thursday traveling. Leaving to London. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so now um, I found a great opportunity for a full-time contract. They're hiring Travel with Curls Mm -hmm. for uh, me to help them with their business development and marketing in London. So it's not that far from Norway. It's not part of Schengen anymore, so I'm able to uh, start the whole visa process there. So, yes, I am starting the whole visa process in a new country. Again. (laughs) (laughs) But I think I feel like I've become the visa expert by now on what not to do, what questions to ask, Mm -hmm. what to avoid. So um, I'm not letting it stop me from Mm -hmm. continuing on uh, growing internationally. Exactly. My heart will always be in the States because that's where I grew up. That's where my family is. But my uh, future, my mindset is more in the European Mm -hmm. uh, side. So yeah, I'm just going up from here regardless of what challenges life brings. Exactly. And you're all thriving definitely and you're (laughs) still like you're you're stuck in this uh, like hard situation but you're not stuck at all and that's what's really inspiring and I want to buy your book (laughs) I'm looking very forward for that and I love that you made it a work book thank you yes because I am a terrible reader Mm -hmm. but when it comes (laughs) I feel you (laughs) to be honest but when it comes to education Mm -hmm. and uh, studying for um, mental improvement and personal development I love studying Mm -hmm. I love learning and implementing what I learn into my business Mm -hmm. and into my personal life so I feel that that's the best way for me to read is through workbooks and I love journaling me too (laughs) I love writing in general so if I can uh read learn and write I feel like that works for me in order to um retain the information Mm -hmm. so I feel that for those who are non- avid readers this would be a great way for uh, you to read but also uh, implement everything that you have read and it's the implementation that's the real thing exactly and use it as reference whenever you feel like you have a challenge when it comes to like a cultural clash whether Mm -hmm. it's at work or in a friendship go back and read what you wrote on how you are gonna uh, overcome certain challenges And take that into consideration because at the end of the day, the best teacher is experiences and the best teacher comes from your trial and errors. And it really comes from Mm self-reflection. You just use other people's inspirations to help yourself become a better you and a better thinker. So, Mm -hmm. And uh, not to end up in jail <laughs> yes and don't end up don't end up in jail <laughs> and you're probably sure. the best person to ask Cheers. for that also <laughs> <laughs> what to do when you're in the cell for eight hours <laughs> <laughs> no yeah also that but, but oh, you're yeah. probably the best person to ask about the visa because you're you're oh. the visa master now <laughs> yeah so not to end up in jail in first place but yeah, if you do <laughs> you can also <laughs> ask I have, a, i have a question for you <laughs> yes that's it 
one last question to finish. <laughs> so um, what do you want to say to the woman, entrepreneur woman uh, from our country? We have uh, Colombia, we have uh, Venezuela, we have Norway, uh, UK, for example, USA, America. So do you want to say something important to the woman? Actually, most women, actually, women, yeah. they have more hair and nose men, you know? Yeah. Um, I would say from personal experience, uh, women, including myself, we're very driven by emotion. I know that whenever I have love, I'm the best business version of myself. And it took me some time to find true love. And once I found true love, I was able to, to succeed and felt like I can take over the world and whatever I want to accomplish. And that true love was self-love. Mm. really knowing how to love myself Beautiful. how to love give going out giving myself a treat having dinner going to the movies by myself but also knowing what i want and what i don't want mm. because having self-love is the base foundation of your emotional state of mind and when you are emotionally stable you can have a thriving business so i would say first before you seek success seek love and that's with loving yourself first because then you'll learn how to love others wow that's powerful so nice. thank you <laughs> wow, wow. wow cheers thank you guys yes. for having me <laughs> yes so this is jessica we're thank super you. super super happy to have you here and I'm gonna i miss you guys yes you too um, yeah but whatever happens we will always meet up in either orlando the states london uk <laughs> london i'm always going to london yeah. or norway when uh, you're back there and i know that you we will see your try when we will support you wherever you are and i know that's gonna be everywhere <laughs> <laughs> same with us probably yeah and what yeah. i also realized actually when we were talking now is that uh, we can maybe even get this I was, I was just supposed to say that to you but i think you're seriously my uh, soulmate though mm. especially when you're talking about uh, that you like feel that you're supposed to be norwegian kind of yeah and i've always had the same thing for like uh, latina I said that when I was seriously like five years old, I was like, no, wow. I'm Latina. <laughs> and in my heart, I said that, like, always said that. You know, it's so funny because you <laughs> ended up with a Latino and I ended up with a Norwegian. Exactly, <laughs> exactly. And we have the complete same, like, traveling yeah. thing from the whole uh, whole experience And there. how you ended up moving to my city yes. and I am ended up moving to your city. Uh, That's crazy. crazy. But we still end up meeting each other in yeah, both. Yeah. Yeah, countries. and then basically living uh, parallel lives yeah. with our own businesses, <laughs> like <laughs> yeah, towards each other. Yeah. But that's uh, I was just thinking of that, listening to you, like that's <laughs> crazy. <laughs> that's so true and kind of creepy. So, uh -huh. so that's... there's definitely soulmates out there, <laughs> and I think I found mine. <laughs> <laughs> oh. She's sitting right in front of me. <laughs> Dun, so dun, dun. yeah that's today's reveal <laughs> wow yeah. no but thank you so so much thank and you guys for having me and for the amazing arepas that cesar made yeah yeah just for you i'm for you <laughs> <laughs> it's how i had the energy to <laughs> talk so much today on the podcast <laughs> yes finally and that's also something that we he promised you back in norway yes. in the Summer first time, time we met yes the first time we met he said oh you like arepas i make some really good venezuelan arepas <laughs> and we always have like you know between the venezuelans and colombians mm -hmm. like that conflict of interest like no i make the better arepas and mm -hmm. i will say me being colombian that the venezuelan arepas are much better so, write that down people <laughs> i've been waiting for uh the arepas that cesar promised me in oslo <laughs> so it only took me getting arrested deported <laughs> <laughs> and us moving and then you moving and you guys moving to orlando for me to finally have these freaking arepas <laughs> yeah <laughs> yeah it was his fault <laughs> just to oh, make it thank up. you guys this was fun thanks for the wine <laughs> <laughs> of course. 
Okay, thank you everybody and thank you Jessica for being here and uh, that's it. Thank you people, so see you soon. Yes, ciao. Bravo, ciao. <laughs> that was good. Good boy, Shadow. Yes, wow.